Well, the, the show's fantastic, and the first thing that, that struck me even like when I saw it was it feels very cinematic. Did you feel that yourself when you were reading the play? That's a good question. I didn't think of it as cinematic because I thought actually Alex has done a terrific job of making it theatrical. Um, I think what's happened is that is our set designer, who's who's extraordinarily good, has has managed to blend both both the cinema and the theatre, and so it's presented in that way. But I think it's unashamedly theatrical. I think it works brilliantly for the stage. And, and it was the, literally the first preview that we did because we'd rehearsed it all and we thought we had, we, you never quite know what you've got. And I, I you know, got from the straight theatre, never done a musical before, but I was astounded by the reaction in that auditorium on our first ever performance. And it's not only maintained, but it's increased. I mean, they're on their feet before they have to be on their feet. And that's what, yeah. but, you know, for, by the end of the, of the play, stroke musical, when, when Heather sings, they are all up. They're literally standing up, and then, then they stand up in the finale because they're up and they want to dance and they want to move around. But, but uh, yeah, unashamedly theatrical for, for that. It's terrific. Yeah, because what I, what I noticed was obviously there's a lot of imagery um, used within the, the film and the way that the sets um, are all brought together really felt like there was like a lot of framing going on and I didn't know whether Thea as well, now having her film experience, wanted to bring that into uh, into the play or the, into the, the musical rather, as well as paying homage to the to the, the original film. All of the above. All of the above. Because I did, I remember her saying that they, you know, there was always the framing of it is a, you know, it was a film and so we wanted to have that like when you guys begin in the beginning mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. So yes, all of the above. They, and, and I, we haven't seen it, unfortunately, mm -hmm. because we've been busy. Mm. <laughs> but, but, um, but yes, I, from what I've heard, and I know from what we've had to work on, you know, with the filming and stuff, mm. it is very intertwined in there. The other thing as well is, is it does feel like it's very character driven, just accompanied by some amazing music. So for you as performers, was it important to, to get characters that you could really, you know, get into depth with and, and really go with their arc, really, in the arc of their um, journey? I think that's been the, the challenge because it's kind of, I always describe it as a hybrid. You know, it's not full musical and it's not a play, but it's somewhere in between. And that's what's been exciting about it. And... If you can get, from my perspective, you know, if you can get the if you can get the scenes and the acting right, and so that people are fully involved and they care about what's going on, when when Heather sings out of that those those emotional songs with those terrific lyrics and that sound, that actually it lends itself more to the theatre than the film in that sense. And I will always love you. Um, coming at the end of that story, um, it packs such a punch because people are involved. And also, with, with regards to the, the characters um, themselves, when you f we first see Frank, he seems very considered, and he seems very much the observer. Is that how you felt that you saw him in, in, the, in the first instances? Well, I mean, he also is, if you think about it. He's the first person into, into Rachel Maron's world. So, that's, so he comes in and he, and he shows the audience Rachel Maron, and then how one might react to a superstar who behaves like she does. It's a real stretch for you, that role, isn't it? I don't know how so to do it. As an artist yourself, Heather, could you relate to r the Rachel character? Um, <laughs> I, I, no, no, I could... Definitely <laughs> nothing like yes, that Yes, I could relate to her. I believe it, yeah. I, I could relate to her a lot. You know, you, um, I, think, I think you have these people in the world who, from the outside, look like they have everything. And the truth is, as the song says, you, you, you have nothing because you're so broken in the side and, and what you want is somebody to love you amazingly well and to feel comforted and to feel protected. And, um, and so sometimes you act out and out of, out of insecurity, you know, out of um, just kind of, you know, fear. This is the only way I know how to behave. And so that part of it sometimes you, you do relate to because you, you kind of say to yourself, all right, I, I know who that is. I, I know her. And sometimes she is me. You know, sometimes you, you act out in this angry way just because there's an insecurity there, you know, and you don't know any, you know. I and mean, the pressures are high too, aren't they? And the pressure is ridiculously high. Everybody's wanting something from you. Everybody's grabbing from you. And, and sometimes you're at your end and, and you don't know how to give more, you know. And then somebody walks in and they kind of say, I see through you and I'm going to break down all those walls. And, and, and like the song says, you feel like, okay, I can run to you. 
and 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 you'll be there. So yeah, she. You know, that's the. I think that's the the thing when we look at these scripts. Um, for me, I look at it and I think to myself, what, do I want to sit and watch this person? Do I believe this person? Does this person have an arc? Is there a conflict here? Does she grow? in the end, you know, the person that starts, is it a different person in the end? And that's the kind of person you want to play, because that's the kind of person the audience is going to connect with. They're going to, you know, have, have, have compassion for, um, you know, and, and, and they'll go on your journey with you. And do you, what do you feel, I mean, when we see the, the pair in the beginning, they're very suspicious of one another. Is, is that how Still you are? <laughs> <laughs> There's no trust in the moment at all. Oh, yeah, the, 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 the common denominator I felt between the two of you was that Fletcher, who I saw played by Caius, mm -hmm. and he delivers a, a wonderful performance. And, and to me, he seemed to be like the, the centre part that, that brings actually the two of you together because we, see, we first see the warmth in both of you from this young boy. Mm, I think that was very, yeah, she got it on. I think that's, um, and I think that's Ale Alex Denolaris who adapted it. That was, that was one of his keys into, into this story. He, he sourced a lot of it through, through the kid. Um, and I think it is, you're quite right, it is a gel between the two. And I think she witnesses his care for, for her boy. Um, and it's a powerful part of that of that story. And more powerful than the movie, actually, I think. Yes. And, and, and at what part do you feel that both of you kept you 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 see the initial attraction within each other as as the characters coming together and really recognising each other romantically? Mm, well, there might be a difference of opinion. Off you go. <laughs> it's like the newlywed <laughs> game. <laughs> I would say I would say that she sees it. There's a scene called the Mayan Club. And um, before she's fighting against him, he's the first person to come into her life and say, this is how we're going to do this. And nobody tells her what to do. And she doesn't like that. And, and so there's this tingle of like, hmm, I kind of like that. You know, somebody, you know, so I'll fight him. But I think in the Mayan club, when she finally sees that he is here to protect me, and he is maybe the only person in this room that I can trust fully. And then he does. He picks her up in that iconic, you know, he takes care of her and holds her. And I think that is when she really knows, okay, I think I like him. When, when did you fall for Well, it's her? interesting, isn't it? Because there's a, there's a line that's in, the, that's in our show that's also in the movie, and she says, um, uh, you're going to have to remind me of the line now, because I know what my line is, which I reply, I know why. What do you say before that? Oh, why do I behave like that? Yeah. You're going to ask me why I behave like yeah, that? Yeah, she says, you're going to ask me why I behave like that. And it's the same he's putting her to bed in the movie, and he says, I know why. So he's already there before her in that sense. He's understood her earlier than that. Um, but it's definitely that moment that changes something because she softens and sees him. But I think he's already seen her. Um, but hasn't let his head get in the way until it's a little bit too late. 